Hello, and welcome to The Fool and the Philosopher. The Philosopher and the Fool. With Cameron. And Connor. I'm Cameron, though. And I'm Connor. Yeah. I was thinking we could start off with um, showing how to, do, how to do a game with us, because I think that we mentioned it a few times, and yeah. it works good for the shorter format, I thought. So mm-hmm. I, can, I can start us off here. Okay. I just have to get over my self-consciousness. Like, I have any of that left, which actually I surprisingly do. So, um, for, as a refresher, I think that D&D should be played as a war game, uh, or as a computer RPG, more than a, um, a collaborative storytelling experience. Because if you want to do a collaborative storytelling experience, I think you should play something equivalent to House, or a game with us is what we called Basically house, but better. Yeah. It's so, like house, but... Cool. Not chef too loud. What is the comparison? Like, what's a video game that we could call house? Um, Sims. Sims? Of- and this is Kenshi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except house and game with us are both better than their equivalents I just chose. Yeah. <laughs> but Kenshi is quite similar to the Sims in a way. Like, you have a bunch of little people you can kind of control, and... They do their thing, yeah. and you build stuff, and you can probably drown people in Kenshi. I don't know. Apparently, Sims is actually a pretty good game. Sims 3, is it? 4. 4. Once well, you have all the DLC. If you're very rich, yeah. A Sims 3, actually, I think still has more than Sims 4, potentially. Really? Um, both very expensive games. Yeah. So, how you start is you want to define the parameters yes. of the game. So, what we used to do, this is basically rote, is... It's a game where it's medieval ages, mythical monsters, magic, and stuff. The end stuff is... The end... The stuff covers everything else. Yes. The standard of what you expect. So mythical monsters is actually very specific myth, mythology. Uh, Greek myth and Persian... Well, mostly just Greek, actually. Well, so and mythical monsters, we have, like, dragons as well. Yeah. Which can be Greek. Yeah. Um, but it would exclude such things as um, made up monsters. So if yeah. we wanted our own monsters, we would add something in like it's a game where it's mythical monsters, made up monsters, and magic and stuff, something like that. Yeah. I think we had a term, but I don't remember it. And sometimes we didn't have magic in it. Yeah. Or we might say it's the modern age. And, yeah. and then what you do, so that's the setting, but then you need a hook. Yeah. So then what you do is you make it up. And here's the thing about storytelling. People say, how do you get your ideas to authors all the time? Mm-hmm. Which I don't know about other, I don't know about authors, but it's kind of a nonsense sentence because the problem is choosing which idea, <laughs> yeah, to choosing go which with. idea to use. And a I think story... a better way of even putting it, like, um, how do you ch- ch- get your ideas? Is how do you figure out which of your ideas is good? <laughs> or uh, you could ask. What made you decide upon this particular topic? Yeah. Even that isn't very interesting because basically what it is is, well, I had two ideas in my head and I combined them and then I had another one. So yeah. what I could do, for example, so for the hook for the game, I will say something like, and this is not pre-planned, but okay, so there is, and you just pick on environmental cues. Right, so there's the guardians of the realm, right? Yeah. There's, there's 18 guardians of the realm, right. 18 orders, and they're, they're like a fence that keeps out the demons. Okay. And the fence has chimes along it uh, of different metals, gold, silver, copper. And uh, it, it creates some, um, the sound resonance, keep out the demons somehow. All right. And you can take those, you can, you can get like a tuning fork mm-hmm. and you can go to the chimes and you can hit it against the chimes. And then the tuning fork will retain the properties of the chimes. And so these, these chimes, they... Um, they're like shrines in Minecraft, right? Where they, they grant you an ability when you're within the resonance of it that helps you fend off the demons. Okay. So some guards along the wall, um, they might have, uh, they might be incredibly durable, whereas other guards might be very fast, or others might be, um, their skill is multiplied exponentially. So what you'd yeah. do is you'd send the most skilled guards you already have to the exponential skill multiplier shrine. Yeah. And um, there is people that believe there is a secret technique to contain two tuning forks on your person at a time to gain the benefits of both. All right. All right. Okay, so that's the hook. Right. So then what we do is 
you put the entire world into your own brain. Yeah. And you ignore the other person for the rest of the game. And you try to be the coolest anime stereotype you can before I even watched any anime. All right, so this is how it goes, right? So, so my guy is walking down um, the road, right? This doesn't work while well, I was in a podcast forum because I'm pretty certain we'd both be talking at the same time as a lot of cases, actually. Well, we're going to do, we're, we're gonna do it, right? Well, and sorry, if we you, talk over each other, it's no, fine. No, it would be more you would be talking or I would be talking. The other one of us would be keeping our own narrative in our head. And there's one thing I do want to stress upon, which is combat, which we will get to, because this is something that I think a lot of people would have questions about. Yeah. Um, basically, you can choose whatever happens in the world and whatever you do. You cannot choose what happens to the other person yeah. or their people. And they can have as many people as they want. Yeah. So I can do something, right? So, okay, so I'm walking down the road, right? And I see you and you, you yeah. and, and I'm walking down the road and you see me. See, yeah. that's even a little bit, I shouldn't say where he is. He should yeah. be able to choose where he is. But just for example, yeah. are you okay with being in the road? Sure. Okay. Yeah, you found me in the road. Okay. And um, so you... The road s- of Beradu. <laughs> so you see this guy, he's got... um. He's got like crazy hair and he's got these long flow, this long flowing overcoat with twin tails coming off of it. And um, he, he looks like tired and slightly insane. And, and a greasy hobo. Ah. <laughs> oh, he, and um, there's, there's someone else who's walking down the road and they're like, it's, it's the deaf Mastro. And you see, and he's the most fearsome bandit in all the lands. And he opens up his overcoat, and you see four tuning forks lying in it. <laughs> and he pulls out two, and raises them above his head, and you hear this humming fill the air. And then he lets go, and they float up into this air. <laughs> this is a bit over the top. Um, all right, now you I'm want. I'm certain it was pretty over the top. Yeah, you want motion as well. It's hard to do sitting down. Mm-hmm. I'm moving around as much as possible, yeah. uh, but it's tricky. We would do this on a trampoline most typically. Yeah, so you get a lot of motion and even just jumping up and down jogs your brain, gives you something to do. And like if you have like a powerful effect, you can jump higher, like wah sort of yeah. thing. It really helps. Um, but it's 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 Hitting each other is acceptable as well as long as it's not too hard. <laughs> so. In VR, there's this concept of being able to walk around in a space that's larger than the space you're in. Yeah. And I think this is basically LARPing within a space that's quite a bit larger than what you're within. So, like, a trampoline, 18 feet across. But we would travel by you walk to one end and then you bounce back, you walk to one end. Or you can walk in circles. Yeah, or you bounce on the spot. Yeah. The motion really helps. Um, Yeah. I don't think it's strictly necessary, but we've never not used it. So right now is quite... Like, the most Mm -hmm. we've done... I remember one game where I was like a lion yeah. and I was like the head of some pride. And so I, I remember I was just lying on the couch that day and I was just like, and then I send out whoever to do <laughs> And, but that's about the, the least we've done. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's just, okay. I don't like playing a bandit cause that's kind of weird actually. Typically yeah. the bandits attack you. Yeah. But so I'm going to discard this character in a moment, but I'm going to, so, um, attack you just so we can show combat. Yeah. All right. So the wild maestro pulls out two daggers and throws them quicker than like quicker than the eye can follow just and they miss <laughs> no, no 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 they don't miss they're perfectly accurate right you... my guy has a natural luck oh okay i, I like it all right but but i can't, can't where's the resonance does he like whip out like a... he just turns sideways and they miss okay but like the, the his luck has to be from the frequencies right yeah yeah yeah, but you don't know where he's keeping right. it. Well, it doesn't have to be from yeah. the frequencies, because we did say mythical monsters, magic, and stuff. Yeah. If I had said it's a game where it's medieval ages and stuff, then you'd have to follow my frequency rule. Yeah. But he could just be a wizard. Yes. All right. Just turn sideways and then pass by him. All right. Behold, Brigham, your doom. You raise up my hands. <laughs> he, he's deaf. <laughs> Sign language is the old brain in your doom. He takes out two massive tuning forks and strikes them together, making discord. And the very air itself crackles and the ground starts shaking. No! The, the, the twin songs of despair. And two pieces of wax melt from his ears. Ew. 
No, like he, like the candle wax. He, I know. <laughs> still you. <laughs> and his his tuning forks start vibrating with the frequency of the greater tuning forks. Yep. My powers! You have undone me, whoever you are. Samuel Samson. Sorry, I'm actually deaf. The wax was just there to prevent rupturing. Could you, could you sign it? Samuel Samson. You have undone me. And then you hear this, this pounding of hooves. And a man in these crimson robes dismounts from the horse. And from the guard. Not interested. And Samuel Samson walks off towards the capital. Good work. You've... Farewell, brave Samuel Samson. You've done it again. I did that, basically. A choice of disengaging from whatever hook you just gave me, which we do a lot. Yeah, and you can you can switch characters whenever mm-hmm. you want. You can... Um, you can Travel. Yeah. One of the, weir- the hardest things I think we do is we want to stay in consistent time to each other, and you don't need consistent time. Like, one of the things, like, I've gone to the location, now I'm weeks ahead of you. What? what? <laughs> yeah, this is something, actually, I think video games should take advantage of. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of weird, but Civilization, for example, or Heroes, yeah. of, Heroes of Might and Magic, or um, Rogue. Yeah. Actually, I think Rogue would be a great example. Um, although, it's tricky because all the creatures are moving. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any reason why simultaneous turns needs to not be, uh, like, why you have to wait for the other player. Like, why can't I be three turns ahead of you? And because if my turn takes a long time on turn four, and you have a quick turn six, you'll start catching up to me. And what you could do is just have a cap of, like, all right, you're not allowed to be more than six turns ahead of the other player. Yeah. I don't see why that isn't, like, an option, really. I, I, I don't know, like. I'm sure it'd cause all sorts of headaches. Yeah, and little a like programming mess. It's probably not too bad on the programming. I imagine mm. it's more discrepancies in the game world. Like yeah. here's my magic. Every Monday you get your units. Yeah, and so you'd be buying units from a castle on a turn before you could, sort of thing. It'd be very weird. Also, you could do some really weird things, like be quite far behind, and then just do like three hyper turns and go and <laughs> fly across the map. Yeah, just before they can react. But I think, stretch, like, make it a two-turn limit. Mm-hmm. Like, you can play your next turn. I think there's a lot of room for flexibility. Yeah. Well, it's like D&D. Um, I have a party of three in the campaign I'm doing. And they split the party, each person individually. And so it's like, okay, I'll focus on you now. Okay, I'll focus on you now. Okay, I'll focus on you now. So going back and forth, because that's all we have to do as a DM. But then it's like, all right, um... So one person like I'll, I go back to the meeting place, and sometimes someone else will show up before them because they actually did less actions than the other person, even though it's like it took longer to say it or whatever. And so it's like having to juggle that in your head, the timing. It, it is a thing in role playing you can do. And I think LARPers might even do it. I don't know about that. So another um, thing I think that's very neat about the game with us is not only can you be in different times, like you're three weeks ahead yeah. and I'm three weeks behind. Because most of the game is taking place in your mind anyways, yeah. you don't even have to tell the other player what you're doing. Yeah. As long as you're like, mm, yeah, uh, and then I swing my sword at him. And you can both be going simultaneously. Yeah. Like, young one. It's... It, so this is far away, right? Mm-hmm. Young one, in your tower. No, I'm in the tower. We're in the tower. <laughs> young one, you are ready to join the Chime Brigade. You're training. Is finally complete. Remember, the demons are tricky. They're cruel. Never let them. You can be doing other stuff right now. I am. <laughs> I've been waving my arms about. Yeah. Can you make humming noises for the for the mm-hmm. podcast? Yeah. Young one. <laughs> Take Ooh. my sword. <laughs> Fool, you cannot defeat a half-demon! Do not be consumed <laughs> with revenge. For I... Your residence are only half effective against me. <laughs> Alright, I'm on a nearby hill. What do I see? There is a large man with curling horns fighting a much smaller opponent who's desperately hitting his sword against the tuning fork and only seems about halfway effective. Okay. 
and they're battling, and the larger man seems to have the advantage in basically everything. Strength, speed. So, um, I run down the hill. Wait! Stop! Stop this fighting! And he jumps in the middle between them. Stop! The larger man swings his sword at the interloper. <laughs> he falls to the ground and bashes his knee on the chest. <laughs> Some pain! <laughs> ah. Alright, what's, what's going on? Um, oh no! You cannot get involved in the... Uh, grab you. The I'm sworn to protect away. the realms of men! Ooh, that's awkward. Why? Ah, and he like, deflects a blow from the big man. <laughs> oh, he's a half demon, so it's like, you have to half protect him. <laughs> I'll do what I can. Spit the abomination. Choose which eye you will keep preserved, half demon. That's, that, that is not how it works, fool. And he raises his hand, fire shoots forth. Divine bell of justice, hear my call. Boom. And this, this sound waves come out in like a sort of shimmering golden aura that pushes back I the fire. I know why you don't like Shonen. Why? Because we made better <laughs> Well, that was a pretty bad one I said I know, right there. No, but we, to express things, like, uh, this is a problem that's affected my dreams. Um, and it, it's a little weird. I think it's... No, it happens to me too. I think I know yeah. what you're talking about. But if, you, if I have a dream and I have a slight amount of lucidity in it, or for whatever reason in that dream I have powers, and other people have powers, whatever, I have to say describe what happens to make them do things or give it a name like fireball like i have to say a fireball or like i have to basically will things in the beginning with my words it's, it's like a little bit like i don't know logos yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean and he's like holding up his like uh tuning fork and it's starting to crack from the fire it's like, ah. actually wait no it's um see that's another thing you can do Wait, no. <laughs> yes. Redact. Yeah. And it's fine because you're not here to win. There's no winning. It's a yeah. game together. And you don't need a GM this way. Unless you're playing Stardegator and then you're there to win, you well, git. The, the Stardegator's thing is he's unbeatable. You can't beat Stardegator. He, he once fought the entire universe plus himself and won. He, he's that unbeatable. The most anime thing. <laughs> it's also so dumb. No, he's the greatest villain of all time. Also, his name sucks. And then what? What? What's his enemies? The Umba beasts or whatever. They're like. Yeah, he, they, no, those are some of the creatures. It's um. He also there's also Star Moon and sorry, it's Moon Deer and Star Deer. Star Bear. Star Bear. No, it's Moon Bear and Star Deer. And to my eternal shame. Those are based on Pokemon. I knew it. <laughs> I was like, this sounds like Ursane or whatever. Yeah, the moon bear is Ursin or Ursin. Ursin? Ursane. Ursane. And the deer is that deer with the little um purple dots in its horns. I knew it. <laughs> what were those beasts? Like, was their name just a sound? Like, were they actually like beasts or something? They might have just been beasts. And then Stardegator has a red version of them, which he can grow he has, from. No, like... he has red and black versions he summons. Those are both his. They're no, but the blue ones are his enemy. Yeah. And the blue ones can summon, like, purple ones or something. Yeah, but he has... But like... he has, like, red ones he can summon, and then he's got even stronger black I thought, ones. No, I thought the black ones are the strong ones. Oh, and then the black it's... ones summon red ones? No, sorry, the black ones are the normal ones. He, had, like, has tons of those, and then he has, like, a couple of the red beads he throws out. Because he has beads he throws out. And yeah, and then they grow into these giant hulking... Yeah. They look... You know that, um... I think this is coincidence, but you know in Street Fighter, that green guy who's like yeah. a sort of weird, like he goes yeah. on all fours? I imagine them looking kind of like that. I always thought of kind of like golem gorillas. No, I think they're like... That's more... the one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. You don't have to define it like and between the I know there's a guy who, now that I, like, I didn't watch Dragon Ball. Like I have seen bits of it and now I've watched a lot more. But he's basically Vegeta in a way. <laughs> Of he's always trying to kill Stardegator, and he's like got two swords, and he holds them backwards, and he's insanely fast, and he's always trying to kill Stardegator. I do know that. En enough about other <laughs> No, it's fine. But, um, yeah, and Stardegator, he's got like this red flowing cloak, and he's he's like super cool. Also, he doesn't look like a crocodile. I've always. That'd be dumb. I don't know. 
<clears throat> where this image comes from, but I know it's based. There's a character in some cartoon, which is an upright alligator, or um, that has like a skull cap on, and it's like the mega skull cap, and he's got like long flowing robes and a cape. Yeah. Don't know it's from, but that's always what I thought Stargate looked like. The Nyx is from uh, Horn of the Abyss. <laughs> kind of like those, except more like a wizard. Except Stargator version. looks like a human. He's like this a skinny, dark-haired human. He yeah, looks like Joker. You know, I've always like imagined manly. him as looking like the like crocodile like wizard. Joker from Persona, but manly. He's always looked like the crocodile wizard to me. No, he's not a crocodile. <laughs> His sisters are like deers and bears, but he's yeah. Um, the other thing is when you set the hook for the game, the best possible thing you can do is try to. Just base it on a song and try to disguise that factor for as long as possible. That was Cameron's thing. <laughs> Mine would be try to <clears throat> come up with a hook that would give me a subtle advantage. I don't know what sort of advantage, like how you could even get advantage. Oh, and also... But I'd try to get advantage out of it. You want re big reveals. Like, all throughout. So, one game I did, I was very proud of. One of the last games we ever played, actually, um, was... I was a, a man named Leiden, who was a death knight. Yeah. And he was this... He went around like he was this terrible, scary death knight. Yeah. And there was this, like, subtly, like, I wasn't him all the time. I was playing a bunch of characters because he was evil, but he was yeah. also, like, honorable. He was very yeah. honorable. But there was a city, and Connor went to that city at one point, and I was the city guard. And I said something like, only those of great honor may enter. Only the pal are able to enter our city of light or something. Yeah. And, and then it was like, oh, pal Thomas, come, enter the city sort of thing. Hmm. And... And we never got to the reveal. Well, you never get to the reveal, I yeah. find, in these. But the big reveal here was that he becomes one of the pals. And he becomes the first pal I did. And it was like, boom, mind blown. Awesome reveal. Like, you gotta, you gotta, all the time we used to put in, like, because it's storytelling. I would do it too, I know. Because I I you are doing cooperative storytelling. Yeah. So you do want hooks, and you do want foreshadowing, yeah, like, and you do want... One of the things, actually, which uh, we didn't do right at the start, um, we prepped for about 15 minutes after we'd given the whole story. Like, you need time to get ready. Oh, yeah, it'd be like... So it'd be like, okay, it's a game where it's mythical monsters, magic, and stuff. Yeah. And um, it's like... Uh, the world's like Lego, right? Yeah. So um, you can, like, take apart things and put them back together. Yeah. And there's also, like... Um, like, you can... But the parts of your body go beyond your physical form. They go into yeah. your um, the mental realm, right? Yeah. So, um, for example, um, you would have, uh, like, I could take out my anger, and then there'd be a bit of room for, like, maybe some extra, like, uh, like more muscles, maybe? Yeah. Shove those in, or maybe I could, like, grab a bit of, like, uh, a bit of wisdom, mm -hmm. stick it in. All right. Okay, well, so now, now I've said the world. Okay, now let's... Um, now let me know when you're ready. I already got my character. Um, okay, I think I got one. All right, so let's begin. All right, and so that was another thing. Yeah, so let's... Yeah, let's play. Yeah, let's play. All right. All right, that was it. Let's play, right. Yeah, so you'd be like, okay, there's the game. And then it'd just be quiet for like five, ten minutes. Yeah. And be like, okay, I got my character. And it's like, not, I don't have it yet. Give me a second. Yeah. All right, I'm ready. Let's play. One interesting thing, um, which I was just thinking about, how preparing for characters sometimes, because we'd be on trampoline, is very, very physical. That was one thing. So it's kind of hard to do a sitting down. But like sometimes, like, you wouldn't be playing a human, like maybe a wolf or like some sort of ghoulish creature. Like I remember distinctly playing a ghoul one time, like this horrible undead bat, like had like a bunch of acid pouring out of its mouth. And sort of like built that up physically in my mind, like what it was, what it looked like, started like working out the actions. It's a lot like theater warm ups, actually. Um, like in theater classes and no, no. Yeah, you're moving around, you're like, ha, ha, yeah, like, yeah this is me. The or you're like, that Bleh, Anton did, Bleh, does. Um, Bleh, Bleh. The, what is it? Improv. Improv, yeah, it's like improv warm-up. Um, you, like, get into the character's head. It's like, okay, I'm Superman, I'm gonna stand tall, and okay, what else, okay, what, but I've got, I'm not just Superman, what do I got? Let's see, so, I've got, like, a, I don't have a sword, that's, I, um, uh, let's, see. yeah, but I'm, like, I want to be... I don't like Superman, no. He's he's not quite... Because it's a bit weird in like a medieval sort of world. So mm -hmm. it's like... More like a like a sort of Lancelot type character. But but maybe... A big S on his armor <laughs> hair. <laughs> but maybe he's he's always... Actually, kind of like Lancelot. He's always there. Like he's yeah. he's always... He makes himself known. His presence is better than 
his strength sort of thing. Oh. And uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, I was thinking about a thing I'd constantly do, and you would do it too, is um, it was a very weird power, which for it showed up just because of the nature of what we did, which is teleportation. However, it's teleportation when something's happening. Mm-hmm. So what do you mean? Um, there are people who would go to momentous events. Yeah. Because, like, sometimes, like, no, you can't be here. Yeah. It's like, no, I have the power to, like, come to, like, important <laughs> events in the world. Like, we didn't describe it as that, but it was basically, like... Yeah, that was another thing, actually. Convenient showing up, almost. Like, in a store... Like, in a story, right? Like, the the big battle's happening with the baddie. And some side character who's, like, interacted a few times then comes back and it's like, I'm here to help! You want to see what the other person's doing. Yeah, you want and to look at that world. So what I did where Connor's two characters were fighting, I said, yeah. I run in and jump in the way. Yeah. What Connor could have done in that case yeah. um, is I say, okay, I run in, I jump in the way. And you say, no, you can't be here. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, um, I'm watching from the hill. And you're like, okay. Yeah. Or you could even say, no, there's no one around. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I hear the clanging in the distance. And you're like, yeah, sure. Yeah, you can start making your way over to it. Yeah. And, uh, and then I, what I can do is I, I say, I'm going to charge straight towards the combat. Yeah. And then you choose how long it takes me to get there. Yeah. So you're at the, so what you're doing is you're at some point in the fight where your arc has resolved. Yeah. And then you say, okay, and then you show up and like, and yeah. then I'm like, okay, and then I jump in the way or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or I see like the one guy dying on the ground. Yeah, like, uh, because we were younger, I think, or just had the mentality of kids, a lot of the t- if that battle had happened and I'd be younger, I was certain that half demon, I wanted to kill the guy. Yeah. If you try to get there, it's like, I jump in the way. It's like, no, it kills him before you can get there. Yeah, and like, that's fine. That's fine. That's probably what I would have done. Yeah. It's a little, like... I remember one game we did where... It was a weird one, because it's like... I, well, it's just a side note. Um, so, we have a bunch of um, Fisher-Price toys in here. If you don't know what they are, they're like little knights, pirates, cowboys. So, my grade one class um, had a bunch of fisher price toys and we get free time I, a lot of time I had to do ketchup work which i hate the name because like why am i using ketchup like that's for food uh, anyways um so playing with the fisher price toys and i tried to get other kids to set up rules like game with us but they were just like no i'm playing with the fisher price like no we gotta set the world and we have that rules here is there magic is there not magic we got yeah this rules. isn't chaos we need some order here um yeah it's uh it's it's structured it's not mm-hmm. you can it's not what you can do whatever you want also if i said like i jump in the way and he's like no i kill him yeah. say no my guy's like super fast and he has a sworn ideal to save everyone he sees mm-hmm. and then you say yeah but this guy was fated by the whatever to die yeah like or if, no he's faster <laughs> if my need yeah. is great enough i can express that but at yeah. the end of the day they're connor's characters yeah so he gets the final say yeah but if my need is great enough i can and if I can't make it there, then I can be like, okay, I'm not there actually because that doesn't make sense. Or I can yeah. say, okay, my guy breaks down because he failed in his yeah. quest. The, I'm not there actually. That's a, like, oh, I actually have no impact in this scene. Yeah. So why be in it? But you can go to the scene if you want to yeah. watch and yeah. then you can leave yeah. without ever having been there. So you go, okay, I'm here. What's going on? Mm-hmm. And then you describe your fight. Yeah. So go on. <laughs> <laughs> the giant half <laughs> demon keeps on swinging his sword, badgering the smaller man over and over again. Eventually, his tuning fork breaks as he raises it to defend instead of his sword by mistake. And then the demon... All right, I use my time powers to, like, disintegrate both of them. No! Okay. <laughs> All right, well, then I'm not here. Okay. All right, you keep doing that fight. I'll, I'm going to do... Okay, so I'm, like, going down a river, right? And... <laughs> yeah, it's very freeform, very open. One thing, um, I don't know if you ever knew, probably to a certain degree, mm. um, that, so that ghoul you were, I remember that game. Yeah. Um, so that was an idea I had, which was, I think I had a nightmare or a, a sleep paralysis uh, experience or something, night terror, mm. where basic I can't remember exactly, where I was awake and asleep, yeah. like eyes open, and there was like creatures kind of like Gollum, but like pure black, yeah. crawling all over me, gnawing on me, trying to get through like a sort of invisible shell around me, mm. and like just trying to like eat at me and get through. And so I thought I thought that was really interesting. Mm. So I started... Um, what was the game with us? Well, I'll, I'll get into that. Yeah. So I started um, thinking about the idea more and more. And I thought, what if death is actually the piercing of that shell? 
Mm. So if you get your throat cut, for example, that degrades your shell and it collapses. And then the bleeding from your throat, that doesn't do anything. Mm. It's the fact that the ghouls can now get in and attack you and kill you. They can devour your soul. Yeah. And then they make you into a ghoul. So that was the game with the, with the seers, the necrosears that could summon yeah. lightning and they could um, create a metal that the demons could use. They could create a metal the demons couldn't cross. Yeah. They could... Um, they could uh, uh, see demons was yeah. one of their powers. And all of that, what I was doing actually was I had started writing a story and I was using the game with us as a testing ground yeah. for the story. So what My character wasn't one of the ghouls or demons. He's just like this weird undead thing. Well, he could like cross between the ghoul world and the non-ghoul world, I think, yeah, or something. Yeah, he is like this weird undead creature. Because there was like though. this green metal that let you yeah. show others the, the ghoul world. Yeah, and, and I think he was he able was, to. He's made like he had it in his blood. His blood yeah. was his blood, and like saliva was that. Or he's able to go through it or something. Yeah, or, yeah. Um, and so I, I often used our games with us as a testing ground for stories I was working on. Yeah, I think um, one of the best. Like it wasn't very much like a game with us, and it's almost because I was a DM in it. But was the uh, la the lab? Yeah. Which you wrote a short story about, I know. Yeah, I did. But um, just an absolutely absurd concept where it's like, sort of, we, you came up with the idea afterwards why the guy did it, but a person has infinite resources and they're really bored. <laughs> so they come up with an experiment. Yeah. No, they come up with something to entertain themselves and then call, figure out what the experiment will be afterwards. Yeah, they, they like... They write the paper after they do the experiment. Yeah. And they basically make the Hunger Games. <laughs> yeah. It was a really twisted. Well, Hunger Games twisted, but it was, like, weird. Yeah. I, And then I ended up writing a short story about it. And, mm. yeah, I don't know if it's any good. It's been a while, but mm. it's one of the longest stories I wrote before I wrote a book. Mm. Or it might be the longest thing I ever wrote before I wrote a book. Mm. Could read it on here sometime. I... I remember snippets from a lot of games but i don't remember a whole lot of them as one of the problems is um the games with us are inter intermixed with um me so to say forcing my will upon my friends in elementary school which is um it started mostly with just romney which is games with us are excellent on big toys yeah and um i didn't call them the game with us because that concept didn't make sense but sort of started out with um, me and Romney made up a world together. Yeah. Um, like, a, not even a world. It's like a universe. It's actually a lot more co-fied and consistent. And Like the Stardegator universe. Yeah. He had um, creatures called Romnivores, <laughs> which are, like, just basically pure mouths, and they can eat of anything. And I had creatures called Fluffies, which are, um... Know the Pokemon Sentry? Center it? Or it's like the... Squirrely thing that stands up. All yeah, time. center it. It's center it. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, give that thing a jackhammer. Yeah. And a little work helmet with a light. And imagine this jackhammer can destroy any material and propels it forwards, and they burrow through the ground incredibly fast. And that's what a fluffy is. It's like a. It's like a worm's <laughs> item. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Might play a part in. Anyways, so we made this. That's even what they look like in worms. They like rise up on their tail and yeah. they like. <laughs> yeah, but it's not right. It's like getting dragged by it. But but they like will pull through into the ocean. Yeah. If the, yeah. Yeah. No, these things look like go through planets and stuff. Yeah. Um, might be like on a subconscious thing. Anyways, so we start up this and we just expand it more and more. So there's like the giant planet, and on it are dragons so big that like they're. Their toe, like their toenail, basically, is like the size of universes. However, all these planets are orbiting around the black hole. And so, and they have like their own sounds and stuff. But so we just play this and we like go through it. And then Warrior Cats came out. And my friend was a big fan of Warrior Cats at the time. So, he read, so we'd play Warrior Cats. So we'd have our own world. And I think we just called that a game. Mm. And then it's like, let's play Warrior Cats. So we'd play Warrior Cats and we'd be the Warrior Cats. And we'd also play Bionicles, like, let's be Bionicles. And I'm the blue one! Um, no, we'd make up our own, so... Um... Was it you there, or was it Calden? Uh, Did I tell you about this? It was um, at Helicopter Park. Uh, I think it might have been Calden then, but we were we just, like, climbing on one of the big toys there. Yeah. We, we were, like, I think 18 or something, we were just yeah. hanging out. And we saw these kids, and we could... Oh, no, I was there. You were there, okay. Yeah, I think Calden was too. Okay, maybe both were. Yeah. But we, these kids playing around on some big toys, yeah. like six or eight-year-olds. Yeah. 
And you could tell they were pretending to be bionicles, but they weren't calling any of them by name. They're like, I'm the blue one. Yeah. I'm the red one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I had, like, we'd make up our own ones. So yeah. I had, um, I think it was Kikolonaton. Yeah. Who was like... Toe of Kikolona beasts. Basically, he could summon a stampede of Kikolona beasts. He had, like, the power to summon a stampede of them. He could summon... A stampede of an endangered species. Yeah. And he didn't do anything to save <laughs> them. He was also like, um, we like made up new materials, I think. Um, what's the main material? Protodermis? Uh, yeah, so we had like new versions of Protodermis, which were like even tougher and stuff. So we'd play that. And then another one of our friends came along. And so all th three of us would play this game. I feel bad for the uh, third friend who came along, though. Because me and Romney did it a lot more before like he started playing with us. And so we had legacy stuff over him. <laughs> and so it's like, no, this thing's being... The, how like good or solid something was in the universe was how long it existed. <laughs> so like, um, Fluffies and Romnivores were basically like the most powerful things. Yeah. Like, they were the most real, the most solid. Yeah. And he would never have something that could be as real as them. Um, That's why Stardegator wins. <laughs> I made things around the same time. You made him up while we were in the church basement. You were like less than half my age. Yeah, you, you made him up while in the church basement. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, oh, that's a little weird. Anyways, um, so we had like three different games we'd play. We'd play, we'd play um, Warrior Cats, a game, and Bionicles. And we'd like switch through them every recess. We'd go and do them. And like sometimes it'd be like morning recess. And then it's like, oh, that's over. And then be lunchtime recess, and we go out and continue the game for lunchtime recess. And then it's like um, the afternoon recess, and it's like I don't feel like playing that game anymore. Let's start a new one. So yeah, games of imagination are very common. Yeah, basically everyone does them. The difference we had the different set of rules, though. It's like if... the difference with the game of with us yeah. is it's codified yeah. and and it has rules. Yeah, like this is how you play. This is what mm -hmm. you can do, and we basically outlined all the rules there. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is basically, if something's established, that's the fact. Yeah. Like, you can't just be like, um, flying horses can no longer fly or something, obviously. Yeah. Or, and, unless you say, okay, actually, no, I don't want this, then go ahead. Yeah. Do whatever you want. All right. Um, that is the game with us. Just that yeah. now people can RPG better. Yeah. Oh, I, I imagine, I've never played Vampire Masquerade, but I imagine Vampire Masquerade is honestly closer to a game with us than D&D is. The World of Darkness? Is that what the role-playing system is called? Yeah. I imagine World of Darkness is a lot closer. I think um, Nobilis. Nobilis is insane. I think it's actually basically the same. Yeah, it's just, it's just more I didn't rules. realize it. It just has more rules. It might not even, because it's kind of... I've read through Nobilis. It's, it's, it's weird. Because at the core of Nobilis, mm -hmm. all you have to do is say, okay, you come across a scene where there is two people arguing. You are the concept of war, I am the concept of nature. Yeah. And I, okay, I influence them to take their argument um, to a point... I think the difference with Nobilis is... Um, well, it has a DM. Yeah, but the DM in Dungeons & Dragons, let's say, is a five, and the player's... Um, no, not even a five. The, the DM is um, one plus the amount of players. Okay. So, like, each player is a one. Right. And the DM starts as one, but if you have another player, the DM's a two. If you have two players, DM's a three. And the person with the high most numbers is always, like, right. Yeah. Um, Nobilis is, is, like, they're a point five sort of thing, plus the amount of players. Mm. So it's basically, like, they actually have interjection. Like, they're... they're the DM's not totally above them. They're well, the, sort of swimming in the same pool. The DM and Nobilis, um, more than telling the story, they show the world. Yeah. And But the because all the players are gods, they can change the world. Yeah. And I think D&D, &D, um, in theory, the DM should only be showing the world to a degree. Yeah. But they can sneak in a story by rotating the world so that no matter which direction you walk in, you're walking towards the story. Yeah. Which I think is totally valid. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Some people might not like that idea. But I'm not going to build an open world for you to wander around in where you're going to ignore 99% yeah. of the stuff I ever made. Yeah. It would be um, an absolute waste of my time. A lot of people like world building. I don't. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be why I'd do it that way. 
Yeah, no, I, I spent a huge amount of my trip to Japan the first time, like on the plane, basically went for traveling or had downtime. I built a world for my players to play in, and I put a lot of work into that. They like maybe went to three locations. You can reuse it, I guess, is the yeah. one thing. But yeah, all right, wrap it up there. All right. <laughs>